Okay, Shalom Rastafari, and we're in the twenty fourth, um, the first uh the first portion of the book of uh, Leviticus, or read the Lewawian. Let's just recap Mastawa right here. Or read the Lewawian, also known as Waikra, uh, Waikra, Waikra, and that's the Hebrew for and where why he called Yikara. Now, Yikara, for those who are into the Ethiopic etymology and connecting the Afro-Shemitic dots between the Hebrew and the the original ancient Ethiopic, Kara uh, actually is worn down from Kala, Kale, Kale, and he called and he worded and he named to speak Kale. Also in the Hebrew, Kol, mean to speak, and gol, gol in the Arabic mean to say, in other words. so And he called, and he said Musa's name, and he called Moses by name. Now, this is our 24th weekly Torah portion, or Rita Kufel, in our annual uh, Hebraic cycle, or black Jewish cycle of um, Torah readings. And it's the first in the book of Leviticus. Once again, it constitutes Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1, to Leviticus chapter 5, verse 26. Now, we as black Jews, um, Ethiopian Hebrews, Hebrews, in the diaspora, we read it and we study it in the 23rd or 24th um, Shabbat or Senbet after the Hebrew holiday or holy day, known as the joy of Jah's law or the Simchat Torah, referred to Psalm 19, where it speaks on the law of Jah, as well as pointing to the, the joy in, with knowledge, with, his, with, with the knowledge of the Son of God that we will have and should have and, and must have to be overcomers. Now, generally, this is in March or early April. Now, this um, kufal or parasha, this portion, it lays out what are known as the laws of the korbanot, another piece of etymology between the Afro-Shemitic, the, the Hebrew, Masoretic Hebrew, and the Gutters, the ancient Ethiopic is the korbanot. The root is karb, makreb, to present, to to um to approach. So when you approach is the gifts, the korban are the gifts that one has upon approach. Now in Christianity and in Ethiopic uh church, these these gifts rather have become sacraments because they are sacraments in the overstanding. Now what we have here in Leviticus is is a like a, a middle realm. A middle realm. Now, what do we mean by the middle realm? We mean the middle realm between when when humanity fell, fell in consciousness to ignorance and and did not know the true Abba, did not know the Father. When they fell, they they sacrificed human beings. Human being. This is where we get uh, human sacrifices from. Human sacrifices in nature is a demonic faith. It's a it's an expression of the demonic faith. The the, sacri the the sacrificing of 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 human beings. And what we're seeing before us is a, a split screen between the Negro sacrifice in the US and the Americas and the Caribbean, the cross, the crucifixion. As they said, the only good black male for them was a dead black male because they sacrifice and still sacrifices the black male to their gods. Their gods are demons. So every time we hear about a black male, you know, being being murdered, you know, or being killed, what you don't perceive is the demonic, the demonic realm that's behind that. That's basically another skull and bones. You see, here's the skull and bones in this particular picture. Remember, Christ was crucified in a place that was known as the place of the skulls. This is why we superimpose this right here. And in older Ethiopic paintings, you will see they'll have almost the same skull and bones 
which is poison, which is danger. This is one of the reasons why the the occultic Satanist people cannot get beyond the skulls and bones. They can't get beyond that. They're at the foot of the cross. Now, tabernacularly speaking, since this book of Leviticus, as the Schofield, um, as the Schofield notes have informed us, um, the book of Leviticus it stands in the same relation to Exodus that the epistles do to the Gospels. So. If, the, if, if Exodus is the gospel, the Old Testament gospel, then Leviticus is the, is the epistles by comparison. Now, Exodus is, a, is the record of redemption and lays the foundation of the cleansing worship service of a redeemed people. Now, Leviticus gives the detail of the walk, the worship, and the service of that, of that people. In Exodus, John speaks out of the mount to which approach the Makreb, the mount to which approach was verboten or forbidden. And in Leviticus, he speaks out of the tabernacle in which he dwells in the midst of his people, as is, he dwells in the heart of his people. So the midst of his people, symbolic, that, that, that was a, you could say, a microcosm of, or a macrocosm, actually, of the microcosm. So as as the tabernacle was in the midst of of the camp before before now note this this was before the golden calf incident where the people basically ate their vomit it's like I often say it's like um, the white Jesus it's like the whole white Jesus thing when people grow up spiritually the lost sheep will grow up spiritually and begin to recognize you know that as the old form of worship that was fraught with errors and 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 demonized and they come into the recognition of our black lord and savior imagine that after they do all of that they go back right after they come out of babylon and are approaching the promised land and getting prepared a congregation of um white jesus freaks pops up in the middle of the camp and they say well it's not rastafari that done this it's not the king of kings and his christ that has done this but it's that white jesus that we used to be worshiping this is similar to what the golden calf was you know to the the israelites it was an earlier form of worship that that was based on certain true principles but was perverted it was it was perverted by the priesthood to keep people in spiritual bondage to keep people basically under the skull and bones you understand know under the skull and bones um <laughs> um and and this will you see the example of once again you understand? Know Once again, you see the black woman, how the black woman play a critical role. If you read Willie Lynch, Willie Lynch will tell you about that as well. And now the preacher, the so-called preacher and the pastor in the majority of the churches, they are advocating a demonic faith, a faith that says but does not do. You understand? Know and, that, and that only says some things over and over every Sunday but don't do the fullness of his way and then wonder why the Negroes are living in the condition and behaving the way they do. You know, and then you have churches on every, not just every corner, in the block, all over the place. It's like the main real estate in the black, mostly black ghetto neighborhoods. You know, and this all connects with the spiritual bondage in this spiritual Egypt. You understand, know, the bondage. So when it's about the bondage in Egypt, it doesn't go beyond just slavery. But the slavery that we as black folks experience in the Americas and the Caribbean is not the form of bondage that the Beta Israel, that the Israelites experienced there. It was a spiritual bondage. You understand, a spiritual bondage where a lot of the same themes were used. This is why the the people could come to Aaron, Aaron, and says, "Make us uh, uh, the, uh, 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 our gods that that delivered us." And what did he do? He he gave them the golden calf because in Egypt that Passover comet 
was likened in the old religion to be the the Hathor was Hathor was Hathor's child basically, and then we can see the child sacrificed because it was not a golden bull, it was a golden calf, and the calf is the babies. You understand? Is the babies. This is why we have the abortion epidemic. This is why we have so many broken homes, so forth and so on. You know, all this drama and melodrama among, you know, the black mothers and the black fathers, because we are in a state of spiritual Egypt. And as we mentioned before, it's, it's the church in the sense that's the gatekeeper of this. You know, because the same Bible that they use to keep people in bondage is the same Bible that can liberate them spiritually and cause them to come out of it. This is what Moses understood in ancient Egypt, too. This is what his, his Ethiopian father-in-law, Jethro, Yotor, you understand, initiated him in. This is why he could go back, him and Aaron, you understand, and do the same, you could say magic, but overcome the... Egyptian priesthood and had greater magic because he had not touched on just a couple of principles, but he had reached the source. He had reached the source. Now, Leviticus is like a probationary stage because once man begins that first journey out of the fallen state, he no longer sacrifices his children into the fire as they did. You know, he no longer sacrifices the human being. He, he kind of grows away from the whole debtors thing. This is where we talk about debtors and even the flesh and so forth and so on. And even among ancient Israel, the flesh wasn't, you know, dead wasn't always eaten. In fact, um, the barbecue thing that we have going on in the Negro community is another Balaam worship, actually. You know, it's like a do-it-yourself tabernacle. You know, put a little tent up there and you can burn your own foods and have your own rituals. See, these things that we do that we're unconscious of have deeper spiritual implications, this is why you'll find that the results, the fruit will, will, if you study the fruit, you'll see what kind of tree it is, basically. If you study the fruit, you'll see what kind of a tree it is. So here, as we're in the book of Leviticus, last we had left off, we had left off roughly right around, right around here. Let's bring this back to um, the Mi'raf uh, Maucha, and we're here in Leviticus uh, I know this is uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 32, verses 28, right? 28. Now, we touched on actually verse, we saw from verse, I think it was 24, 25, after the golden calf incident. We have, um, and Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked to their shame among their enemies. And Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Adoni's side? Let him come to me. And all the sons of Lewi gathered themselves, or Levi gathered themselves to him. Remember, the book is known as Oritze Lewawian, the Torah of the Levites. And he said to them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate. So they went in and out from the gate, from one gate, one star gate to the next star gate, and they basically imploded stars throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion or wadaju, even his loved one, and every man his neighbor. Verse 28, and the children of Lewi or Levi did according to the word of Musa, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Now we say compare this with with um with with the new covenant where three thousand were added to the church, you know, in the early church, the original church in Acts of the Apostles, you get an in an uh, inversion because they were uh, of what happened. They were obedient in the New Testament sense, and the true Shekinah now came upon the people. But here the people could not wait until Moses returned and they went back to their vomit. They went back to their old way after they said that, yeah, 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 we will obey. They went back to their old way. And that is why they were murked by the Levites. That's why they were killed, in other words. For Moses said, had said, consecrate yourselves today to Yahweh. Every 
even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing, a blessing this day, Musain, Zare Barakatin, and Dia Warida Lachu, Iandandachu, Belijachu Hunna, Bewendamachu Lai, Zare Jachuhun, Le Xiavihir Kedus Adergu Ale. Um, verse 30, and it came to pass, and it came to pass on the morrow, like the next day, that, that Musa, Moses uh, said to the people, ye have sinned a great sin. I want you to pay attention to this right here. This golden calf shit worshiping the bling bling and all of that is a great sin. Return to the vomit is a great sin. You know what I'm saying? Not coming out of Babylon, in other words, is a great sin. You understand? Know and now I will go up to Yahweh, to Adoni, to Jah Adoni. Peradventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. I shall, I shall try to reconnect you all because what you did is basically you disconnected yourselves. You disconnected yourselves, and Moses returned to Yahweh and said, "Oh." This people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. You know, it's made them gods of, notice, of gold. Is that any different than what's going on among the lost sheep Negroes today? That's almost, in principle, this exact one and the same thing. You would think for all the churches and preachers, they would, they would know better. But verse 32 says, Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin." And if not, blot me. Moses said, take me out, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. This is also a major teaching as well here. Don't have opportunity to go into what, what happened on the details of what Moses is talking about. There's a context the way he's talking about that is usually lost on ones and ones that are reading it. From, from a so-called whitewash, Western Gentile perspective. But he says that he, he asks to be blotted out of the book. You know, verse 3-3, three, three, and Yahweh, Adoni, said to Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. In the sense, have you sinned? You was up here with me. You was up here getting the instructions, the way of life for them, and they was down there being impatient. Therefore, now go, lead the people to the place which I have spoken to thee. Behold, look, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Now we have in verse 35, which completes this chapter, chapter um, 32, it says, and Adoni and the Lord plagued, plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Interesting. They made the calf which Aaron made. They made, they made the calf which Aaron made. Interesting right there. There's more to that, of course, but that, remember, they came out of Egypt. So if you don't have it in the Egyptian context, and so all is hating against so-called Egyptian archaeology and Egyptology, one should try to connect the dots so they can see the true picture. But it says that Adoni plagued the people. He plagued the Israelites. Why? Because they made the calf, the golden calf, which Aaron made. Now, Aaron, he was the brother of Moses. Isn't this interesting? He was the brother of Moses, and he's the one that they went to in order to make this, 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 this calf because they knew what he did in ancient Egypt. They knew what role he served in ancient Egypt. So they turned to him like, you know, like one of their pastors or preachers, so forth and so on. And he said, well, let's, let's do what we did before, you know what I mean, to appease, in a sense, the people. Now, he was wrong, of course, for that. But considering the circumstance and the situation, you understand, the people had proven that they were not willing to go forward, but instead went back. But here's the key right here. Aram yesarawin tija sile saru egiziavihara hizbun keshefe or keshefe. 
that he plagued them. When you look at the condition of black people, right, just look at the condition of black people today. Are black people plagued? You understand? Are, are we plagued? Is it just a plague of the white man, or does it go much deeper than that? The white man is an agent, in other words, just like a lot of Negroes are agents, too. You understand, in this present time, one time the white man was more of the only or the main agent. But now, a lot of black people, willingly, they are agents as well. So we keep seeing this picture, in a sense, repeating itself. Do, do you not see the similarity between the two? You understand? Let me just quote the scripture right here to you. Um, Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. It says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Listen to Paul's language. Who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christos hath been evidently set forth? In other words, when you look at this in the language, it means pictured, who has been pictured. So even in the time of Hawadi Apollos, there were paintings or pictures of Yeshua, Yehoshua being crucified among among you, uh, among you. Now, in connecting this with our main theme of Lewawian, of Leviticus, and it's very important that we really begin to understand these types, you see, because these, th th these types right here will better explain, let's use the other, the other picture right here, not that one, not the preacher, the skull, but let's use this one right here now. All right, let's go back to this this type right here. So here we have here we have the 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 five main types. Now you can note the number five if you will. You understand the five main the five main types, right? There are these five main types of of acceptable sacrifice. So as we were saying that the that that when man was in his fall with the Garden of Eden. You know, well, they, you know, what they ate, I guess someone needs to tell you what they ate basically wasn't just a fruit like an apple or orange, but it was a fetus. I know that might surprise some of y'all, but some of you, you're know, probably not really surprised if you've been studying and praying and meditating and studying the word and putting together. You understand what did they eat? You understand where did they get the skins from? You understand where were the skins taken from? You understand? This is before there was anything about sacrifice, and the first thing we have when they come out was with Cain and Abel as a sacrifice. So they must have already understood sacrifice, and the sacrifice of the animal was something that was permissible at this very time as a teaching, as, as, as a teaching tool, just like ones would use stuffed animals even in a sense to teach their children perhaps certain lessons. Some people will give their child a certain animal to teach them a certain kind of a lesson and see how they take care of the animal. Like you could tell what kind of child, you know, one has by how they treat their their particular animals. You understand? Now, what we have right here is the intermediate realm where you have to understand that ignorance, the original sin was ignorance, which led to disobedience, ignoring what was said leading to disobeying what was said. And now with the fall of man or the fall of human being, we have something in consciousness but also in genetics. Something also is going on with genetics. This is why when it talks about this particular sin, this khatiyat, that this particular sin brought about um, um, death. That before this there was no, no death inferred. But after this death, in other words, what prevents, what, what would have prevented death before to the human condition? Well, obviously, is some regeneration. That regeneration, what we can call redemption, you understand, was lost. Something happened within the, the, the spirit of man, within the, the spiritual disconnection from God. The, the, the psychological deformity of consciousness affecting the body and the genetics. The Bible even tells you that death reigned as king 
from Adam to Moses. Why would the Bible then say just to Moses? Why would it stop at Moses? Not, not stop completely, but the reign of death. You understand? The rulership was taken away from death. You understand? In Moses, to that time of Moses. Why was Moses one of the, one of the two immortals or obviously showing themselves to be alive in the transfiguration on Mount Tabor with Yeshua? Why would Yeshua then take his disciples, his chosen or elect disciples up to that to witness to um to witness that particular um transfiguration because showing the potential in man what man had lost you know within in ignorance and through disobedience so what we have is human sacrifice under the demonic lordship or rulership when man fell under the demons Gennett to Aden, Garden of Eden so human sacrifice then we have the intermediate phase of of let the man live, sacrifice the buffalo you understand from Macy talks about that and gives some very interesting examples in other cultures as well how the, how the buffalo was a type of man if we look in symbology of different languages and even in Ethiopic Enoch it speaks about in, in certain types of animals, and these animals are interpreted to be the biblical types, but using both the celestial and the zoology, you understand, as a, as a basic metaphor, should we say. So we can see that there is a, you know, even today, for a lot of things we say in this language, um, you know, we refer to a, a, a idiot or so-called somebody stupid as a jackass. We refer to a woman, uh, sometimes woman in, in, in cat-like or feline terms. Why do we do that, being so advanced? And as soon as it's said, people know what you mean. It's like something in our genes, something in our psychology just registers that very easy, succinctly. You don't have to go through a whole bunch of scientific terminology and stats and data. We know these things, and they cross cultures. You know, and they go through all sort of um, cultures. So there's a very important lesson that we'll learn here when we start to look at these types, right, these types. Now, it's through Leviticus or the Levites that now the priesthood function for the rest of the, the tribes will be performed. But what, what does all of this mean? What does all of this mean? So the burnt offering was the first type, right? The burnt offering was the, was the first type. And let's just bring up that, um, that uh, see if we can bring up the, the brazen, the brazen, um, the brazen altar. So you can see what that brazen here, the Mizbeach, the Mizbeach right here. So let's bring this here, and here we go right here, and the Meshawiya, right? The brazen altar right here, right? Now you see the staves, you see the pole. Um, here we have down here that the Messiah Yeshua was able to endure Yahweh's fiery judgment. Remember when he said to him, are you able to endure the fire? You know, like, are you able to endure that? Remember three types of baptism, water, spirit, and fire? Well, here we go. This now corresponds, when we look at it tabernacularly speaking, this corresponds to the foot, you know, saying to the foot of the cross. Let's see if we can bring up this other this other word pick right here that we had um, selected before. Um, okay, that's not it. Let's see if um, that's not it. Let's see, right. I think it's on the, is it, I know it's on the temple. We, we had saved it on this drive on the temple. Okay, here we go right here. Um, Let's see if we're able to bring this up. All right, here we go. Notice, notice something right here, if you will. This might be a little better way to um, demonstrate. This is a, this is a overview, right, of the tabernacle, right, and this is Christ on the cross, right. Now, right here, this is the mizbeach, the brazen, the brazen altar, 
right, where the sacrifices were brought. When, when the sacrifice was brought in, it was brought right here, right? And the hand was laid on top of the head of the sacrifice. And then what one specifically did. Remember, this is all voluntary. They were not commanded that you had to do this. You see, this is the key. The key word in this book really is if. You understand? If. Because, see, the people already shown that they, had a, that they were not able to go to the higher level when they had violated the, the ten words in the golden calf incident. So they had to go through a remedial, you could say, phase. And now Yahweh did all of this graciously. He didn't have to. You know, if it was, if it was anyone else, they would be like, what? I told you that if you did that, it's going to be bad for you. And boom. You know, I mean, how would we have judged someone if we told them, hey, this is what you do, such and such, and they had done this to us? You see what I'm saying? So we can, we should be able to understand Yah's graciousness even in that particular aspect. So he was not giving them something that they did not already show that they had an inclination. He mercifully gave them these offerings in order to approach him. To approach, you can say the makreb had to be with the korban or the korbanot, the korbanot, the karebanot, right? The, the offerings. That's often called the sacrifices. So the burnt offering, right? The burnt offering, the brazen altar, you, you know in the church they say come to the feet of the cross or come to the feet of Jesus, his brazen feet, his brass feet. You, you wonder why that, that corresponds to this area of the tabernacle. You understand? You understand that corresponds. And even the water, the lava is interesting, you know, whether you want to put this in the loin area or but it's, it's more or less put on the side area up here. So we have the lava, right? You know, the water, you know, water, living water, right? Then we have this right here, the breast, the, 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 the golden lampstand, the table of shoe bread, the, the voice, the vocal box right here, the speaking, the incense. He breathes on them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy of Holies, the head of Christ, he's the Aras. You understand? He is the Aras right there. The Elvis. And then, of course, at the top, at the top was that proclamation and facing to the west. So we begin from east, facing to the west. That means the the solar sun would be behind us. But what did they do later on? They apostated themselves and they worshiped the sun, so they kept their backs, they turned their buttocks, you understand, to Yahweh. And Yahweh recompensed them. You understand? Well, we should really say he recompensed us. If you think about the black man and the black people's condition, if you know who we are, if you know yourself, you understand? So he didn't recompense them so much, but he recompensed us. So we have an important decision before us. So the burnt offering, it typifies the Moshiach, offering himself off spot to Ha Elohim. As the sacrifices, you know, the animal sacrifices couldn't be some lame animal already dead. You know, you know, so you're going to give that to, you know, the Lord, some lame animal already dead. No, it would be a, 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 a animal without spot, without any sort of um, blemish, in other words. So without spot means without blemish to, in the light, to do his father's will, even if the will had to be done in death. In other words, even if the will led to that you know, he did not shy away from that, as a lot of these counterfeit Christians do today in their, um, you know, demonic faith, you understand, which says one thing and maybe shakes and trembles a little bit, but does not do his will because they're afraid of men and people. Secondly, it is a toning, at toning, at warning. Because the mitmanan or the amanya has not had this delight in the will of God. None of us can say we had before being born again this delight. Even I, I and I myself, there's a delight in this. And it's nothing you have to fake. It's no fake fire. He says no strange fire. You don't have to work up, you know, work up a sweat or work up a, you know, like make believe. No, it will come. 
You understand? Patience. That's what the Israelites didn't wait for. So they had to do strange fire kind of thing with the, with the golden calf. It's like, you know, not wait for God to reveal his will and do it, but to go back to what they thought was from their regurgitated, you know, eat their vomit, so to speak, wallow in the mud, so to speak. And thirdly, is substitutionary because substitutionary, so it's a substitute offering, that animal that was brought forward, really meant that you're, you're admitting when you're bringing this animal forward that since it's voluntary, that your conscience has so bothered you that you know you're worthy of death. So that slaying of the animal, you understand, was to show you what you really deserve. You understand? You have to remember that, that some of us now could understand better the, the abstract sense of it, you understand, or the metaphysical sense of it. See, but the, but the people at that time, when people are under such demonic faith, you understand, and coming out of such a bondage, a spiritual bondage, it was impossible for them to know it without actually knowing it. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't tell somebody something. You could tell them something, but they won't know it until they actually experience it. And when they actually experience it, they come back to you like, wow, that's what you was talking about because they've actually had an experience. So, so the Israelites, in a sense, had no wisdom in, in that sense. They were ignorant. You understand? And they were disobedient. But now the, the book of Leviticus now is, a, is, 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 is the detail of the walk and the worship and the service of, of that people, bringing them up in degrees to that which was perfect, speaking of Yeshua, HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. And we will understand this when we look at the types because Christ did it in the sinner's stead. So as one would bring the animal, the Moshiach, the Bain Ha Elohim, brought himself, brought himself. But the thought of penalty is not prominent. The thought of penalty is, is not the prominent thing. It's, it's, it's more about conscience. Understand that. Even when the Israelites brought forward their, their animal sacrifices, they did not have to. It wasn't like that you must. Remember what the key word? The key word, let's go over the key word right here, where it says um, in verse 2, Leviticus chapter 1, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, if, if any man of you bring an offering to Yahweh, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock, if, Again, his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd. Let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will. His own voluntary will. No, no force. No, no, no make believe. No, his own voluntary will at the what? At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before Yahweh. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him, in, accepted for him to make an atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before Yahweh. So it wasn't the priest that did it. It's the person that brought that animal. Now, a lot of us can't overstand this, but imagine you have pets today. And you, you, you love your pet, but you're going to bring that pet in your own place. I'm talking about the conscience. Of, it probably bothers some of you all even to think about it. Wow, that was the whole point of it. That was the, come on, we're dealing with people that after everything Yahweh showed them, these are people that still did what they did. You understand? Knowing what they knew, they did what they did. So to say that, well, Yahweh could have forgiven them and he's bad because he had them go through that is just ignorance. The emphatic words, Leviticus 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, are burnt offering or burnt sacrifice, voluntary, and it shall be accepted for him and atonement. These are the key these are the key, the key words, the key words right here, the key words in this particular, in this particular portion. Now, as we, um, as we go forward, you understand, as we go forward, we're going to go over some of the five types, 
the five types and and learning these five types of um these five types of uh of creatures you know what I'm saying that are acceptable for sacrifice we're also going to be learning about the the ancient mythology because we'll we'll find that this symbology of animals no matter what particular culture or tribe or so forth and so on these um types are consistent in in the basic interpretation among all kinds of people among all kinds of tribes, and as we mentioned before, we'll mention again Gerald Macy's uh, Book of the Beginnings, Book 1 and 2, but in particular with this portion of Torah, I find that Book 2 has a whole lot of references, so I would mind advise to get Book 2 before getting Book 1, but if you want to be complete and have everything there, even for the minor references, get Book 1 and 2 and www.loj society.org click on the books link you'll find in a book of the beginnings Gerald Macy gives us some of the sociology that provides some of the that provides some of the um the the background you understand the background to this um to this study that gives us a, a kind of a universal um a universal key when we speak about the bull you understand when we speak about you know the bull as a this kind of the bull as as a particular type. It's interesting to know that when we go to um, which book is it? Uh, Ethiopic Enoch and Ethiopic Enoch, the earliest versions of Ethiopic Enoch. Instead of mentioning you know Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel, it mentions them. It mentions them according to according to certain symbolic animal types. So now we, we've moved forward from this right here. I hope you understand this. We'll get into some more of the detail of that. But that's part of the mystery right there, the mystery of the cross. You understand? You need to understand the tabernacle. If you don't understand the tabernacle, this is why Christ taught them from the law of Moses, the Psalms of David, the um, the prophets, and, and the other scriptures, all those things concerning concerning him. So now we have the Mizbah, you understand the brazen altar, notice the brass color, you understand, you know, which is a which is the complexion type of, of, of the black man, of black people. This is why they, they speak of, about Christ's feet. So there's a symbology of Christ's feet being the brazen altar in the symbology of the tabernacle. But it's also is both speaking of his divinity and his humanity, speaking of him as being a black man or a black male, more specifically, or the black male, more specifically, and in his humanity, speaking of his his, his Ethiopian race or his his black maleness, and then in type is speaking of the tabernacle. You understand? Once again, in type is speaking of the tabernacle because. That area of the tabernacle, that area of the tabernacle is, let's get the pointer, is right here. This is this, which is correspond to the feet. See that, to the feet of Christ. So before we even get into much detail in this book of Leviticus, that's why we're going through some of this detail. So as you go through it, your eye will be open, your eyes will be open to see, well, what are these types? What is, what is it really saying here? And once again, we can't more highly recommend the, the Schofield Reference Bible. We have a free PDF download at, at our website, www.lojsociety.org. So go there and check it out. Um, now we want to get to these types right here. Let's, now we've kind of demonstrated that to a point, at least give you a reference Give give a basic reference now. Here, let's um deal with this this particular portion right here. Let the five the five um types of creatures which are acceptable for sacrifice. What's the meaning of these types? <laughs> 